Good evening again. I'm. Oh. Sometimes too much of a good thing. <clears throat> Slept like a log. Uh, good on some pieces, not so much on others. Alright, I've been working on fixing up my stone processing. Now you ask, what do you do with stone? A lot of things, actually. This planet actually has some really interesting stones to work with. Uh, a material you may not be very familiar with if you've never left top time is that very malleable very awesome thing called concrete now why don't you see it in top if it's so awesome the reason is very simple it is awesome where you can make it it is not so awesome in other places uh, in order to make concrete you need to process a very large amount of stone into a smaller amount of a powder known as cement this process basically involves a lot of heat a lot of uh, gas being pumped back into the atmosphere mostly CO2 which is very bad for the environment on a planet like uh, the one I'm working on to build this world it doesn't matter so much uh, the plant life not worth bothering with so much uh, basically on the galactic scale it's biomass and that's it the, geolo the biologists have actually been here before I ever came They've cataloged anything they could find that was interesting. They've taken samples, and at this point, they've deemed the world exploitable, shall we say. If you want more details on that, feel free to listen to my previous journal entry now what's on today's menu I am currently finishing up a new four million unit <coughs> storage in it, I'll be storing uh, stone bricks uh, for further processing, mostly. Uh, while stone bricks are one of the things you can put on the ground as a foundation, uh, I don't use them uh, because I have a preference for something we call refined concrete. On this planet, because I have ample supply of stone, of the proper variety mostly due to the fact that there's water here in the a large amount of carbon in the air well not anymore but it will again anyway there's a cycle to the CO2 but it's geological I don't care so much. Some, if there was intelligent life here, it might be very, very cross. If there was an animal life here, it would probably die. But, uh, yeah, like I said, this place is already pretty much a death zone for most things. I've got uh, satellite defense up for the duration of the project.
This means I'll actually not have to worry about damage impact, uh, impact damage from anything bigger than a few grains of sand hitting the atmosphere. So I'll be doing more damage than anything. That is likely to bother me, but yeah, the native life here is screwed. What little of it there is anyway. So again, concrete. There's a very strong gas exchange that needs to happen both when you manufacture it and when you use it. It needs to breathe in uh, gases from the atmosphere as it cures. And that means using it in anything like a closed environment like the top cities tends to be extremely bad for the air purification systems. Even on top time, it makes it very, very problematic. People don't want to lose three or four weeks of top time for things to cure. Because while it's curing, nobody can wake up. So that's kind of annoying. And even then, it can, like I said, it requires. It's like having a million people as an additional in the place, like it's while it's curing, it's horrible. But where I am, I'm lucky because there's a lot of oxygen in the air. And the place is pretty big. And I'm not really bothering anything. So, concrete. You turn it into a powder. You shape it. You make a mold. You mix the powder with water and something called a filler which is basically more stone processed into more powder. If you can get sand, uh, naturally it's nice, but basically what I use in my processes is a bit more problematic for the factories making it, just because it's a little more complicated. But, I don't have to worry about getting the sand. It gets processed along with the stone. And then you get a powder called cement. And separated from that, we get basically a uh, fine grade silicon oxide. From this oxide, which we have a lot of, we put it into the cement. The cement acts as glue once you introduce water and carbon dioxide. You don't really need to introduce carbon dioxide in the environment I'm in. I make a ton of it in the atmosphere anyway. And just the making of the cement itself releases a shit ton. That's where the cycle becomes important. I could capture it and there's ways to reintroduce it, but <sighs> why bother at this point? Alright, sorry about the noise, I've been eating. Now. You make the mold. You 
where uh, you mix in a mixer your sand or filler uh, sometimes we add uh, just crushed rock that's actually mostly what I use the cement some water mix it all up until it turns into a paste put it into your mold let it dry for eh, some time uh, let me check my notes oh yeah it's uh, three days of local time is the recommended time but you know it's local time it's minuscule I don't care I usually leave it there for like eh, 10 or 8 days local time <laughs> like I give a shit And then, oh, sorry, I'm still eating. And then what you do is you remove the mold, and it stays there in the shape of the mold, the inside of the mold. Now this may not look uh, very interesting for people who are used to making art. Uh, molding is something that is used highly using mostly 12-7 uh, or 12-12. Uh, polymers but here's the thing concrete molds we make support millions of tons there's a few interesting processes you can add into there to make them almost impossibly strong to compression Try and try and try, you will not crush these things. They are strong. We use uh, different forms of this to uh, put pads down uh, for faster travel. Use it when we use uh, local automatons for planning and such uh, between trains and other things. Uh, speaking of trains, uh, the rail system is heavily dependent on uh, various forms of this mixture. Uh, we use m much more rock uh, into the mixture we use for trains, but there's uh, too complicated to get into it. But anyway, uh, long story short, I need to make something called stone bricks, which is basically cutting the stone so it's easier for transport. And they are used uh, for making uh, export products, uh, mostly on the industrial uh, things for industry. They are also used for my local industry a lot. Uh, most of the furnaces use uh, stone brick components. So everything I use for making uh, forges and refining metals require stone bricks to build it. So uh, we use these for a lot of places and I was having problems making enough uh, in part due to the same problems I was having with other things which is why I'm moving right now from Finishing up, if you would, phase one of the development project. I'm a little bit disappointed to finish it here, but it needs to be done at this point. We, yeah, I'm basically not able to reach up to as high as I'd like on certain kinds of productions. I'm looking at how I've been making the basic electronic components, and the, these are a huge bottleneck at the moment. I need to improve the process. I've been using a very large reclamation project to do this. I'm actually going to be switching to something else. I'm going to make a brand spanking new uh, but very 
dedicated factory to making what is required to make and a board, uh, what we call boards, which is basically all the electronic components. Uh, yeah. But because of the way I plan to do it, I need to once again change part of the way mines work, which is annoying. I'll be uh, getting a new everything. But before I can do that, I've had to make a few decisions. First of all, I'm going to keep using the uh, large mine spikes, uh, 10 wagons, 4 locomotives for transport, uh, but I'm basically condemning a, an area of the planet to never be mined. There's a lot of resources I should probably be able to get from there, but I decided I don't care. There's a lot of resources to get everywhere here, so yeah. Land is a premium right now. So, I'm going to need to do go exploring. Uh, I've not done any proper exploration close up yet. And uh, while the satellite images and the is pretty good, the way the telescope works so it can zoom in close enough means doing large scale surveys with it is crap. Resolution is not good enough to see anything but the clouds, basically. So not worth looking. Before now, I've always been using the uh, basic automaton to go and explore things, but that's not quick enough for what I need to do now. I don't want to be bothered with trees, which there are a lot of, so I'm building a tank. Which I'll be using nuclear fuel on so it goes quick. And I'm going to be seeing where the water stops on the other side of the sea. I've been, well, it's not a sea, it's a large lake. But yeah. There's a lake northeast. I'm going to go east of that. And none of the resources there will be getting used ever. Just going there and grabbing everything I want as I can as far as space. And I'm going to start setting up a new industrial complex dedicated to making all the different electronics. The slightly annoying part of that is I may very well have to get different ways of <clears throat> sorry managing the extract from the mines. Uh, it's gonna suck. But I think the end result will be better than what I'm using now, sadly. I see sadly because I just rebuilt it, so it's kind of annoying to have to do it again. But it'll be worth it, I believe. Especially in the long run. Right now I'm realizing doing large scale processing of some of these things is not so much as about the processing as much as moving things around and things are not moving around the way I want them to right now. Not quite as efficient and it's not working all that well. But this was the first time I built something so this big. Eh. What's the point of getting to build a planet and doing exports if you can't make a few tests and learn something? Alright, my tank has now been made. 
I will be starting at Linux Joe for my exploration. Where is it on the board?